In this day and age, over-the-shoulder camera angles and even first-person views flood the survival horror game market as the go-to perspectives, definitely in the AAA space, and because of this, so many of these horror games have a similar feel to them. Like with the recent Silent Hill 2 remake, if you put that side by side with the Resident Evil remakes we have got over the years, you would almost think the same devs made both games. Now obviously if you have played these games, they clearly feel different control wise, but from the outside have a strong visual similarity because of these perspectives, which bleeds into normal encounters and scenarios in these games, causing it all to kind of mix together in a way that gets almost too predictable to the point you almost get fatigued playing these these games because the creativity feels very on rails to fit a market that might punish for wanting to go off the tracks to try something different. But that's where indie games come into play. There are devs in this space willing to try something different and go against the grain to step back in time to capture that magic that made classic survival horror games so special. Two of the best examples for me are Crow Country and Signalis. Both of these games I absolutely loved and are full of creativity. Not to mention, I'm sure there's plenty of other indie games out there I don't even know about being made right now that could be just as good as these, or even some of the ones I've never played, like Elisa. But there's one I've been following for quite a while now, and I've made multiple videos on it already, which is Echoes of the Living, a truly classic style survivor horror game being made by a couple who truly understand what made those style of games so special back in the day. Which, if you're wondering why I'm making another video on this game, it's because they just released a new demo for Steam's Next Fest that lets you experience the opening moments that set everything into motion, which features two different characters you play as, Octavia and Liam. Octavia's portion acts as a tutorial type area that teaches you the basics on how the mechanics work and what you can expect from the game, while Liam's part really throws you into the fire, making you fight tons of enemies in a tight space, and they have some good design choices here I really like as well. First off, instead of coming across your first weapon in a safe place or giving it to you before the undead attack you, for both Octavia and Liam, when you finally find your first weapon, you are confronted by the undead before you can grab it. So you're in this situation where you have to grab the weapon and equip it while the undead is coming after you in very tight stressful spaces that really puts that fear into you. This approach to your first introduction of combat is so nice, it really sets the bar for what you're about to experience in Echoes of the Living, especially with Liam, because your first weapon you grab is a melee weapon, which teaches you how powerful but limited these are since they break after a couple uses, but because they kill in one hit, the player instantly understands how useful these are as a resource before you finally get your gun. Where if you got the gun first and then the melee weapon, a lot of players might skip over or wait to use the melee weapon thinking it's a last resort type thing. Where this way, they know it could be used as a massive ammo saver used in the right way or a lifesaver in a desperate situation. So I'm happy to see the devs took this approach with introducing combat to the players. Now visually, the game is looking stunning. It's been a year since I played the last demo, and it looks like it. The attention to detail and how the environments are designed is amazing. They found a way to provoke that dread feeling of what might be around the next corner, and obviously a strong reason for that is the camera angle work they have going on. They make you fear each doorway and window you pass by or can see which is why I love fixed camera angles so much. While I have nothing against over-the-shoulder cameras, some of my favorite games use them. But there's just something about the tension a fixed camera can create that makes even engaging with the most mundane enemies feel stressful. Like in the first situation where you have to grab the axe with Liam. Even though you just grabbed a powerful melee weapon, the camera angle makes it very hard to judge distance at this part. So you're debating on if you should try to fight where you're at or reposition, but you also don't know if any other undead are now roaming around. So you're also worried about being cornered, but these type of scenarios are just really hard to pull off without a fixed camera, which is why for me this will always be my favorite way to experience horror games. Also, it helps that the controls of the game are very tight and responsive, definitely when it comes to the movement. 
Echoes of the Living might have the best tank controls I've ever felt, and I'm not joking. I'm not sure what it is, I don't remember them feeling this good in the last demo, and I didn't like how they felt at all in the initial first demo I played. If you go back and watch it, that was one of my biggest criticisms, but now it feels like from a mechanic perspective, it's equally good to the other aspects of the game and quality. Also, we finally got some real cussings and other characters to interact with, which was nice to see. Though the cussings and even the voice acting isn't going to blow the world away, they do a really good job in helping the player digest the story and understand the personality of the characters they are playing as. Not to mention, the opening scene where all hell breaks loose feels more meaningful when you pass everyone on the way to your room in the hotel, knowing that the people you just interacted with, you now have to kill, and I really liked that. My biggest concern I brought up in my last video on Echoes of the Living was how the story was going to be presented to the player, which I know some won't care about this stuff, they just want a good gameplay experience, and that even for me is always the most important aspect of any game, is it fun to play. But the characters and lore of the world can amplify that experience if done right, and I'm starting to feel confident that they might just nail that aspect as well. I also want to throw in one more comment about the voice acting. Octavius is really, really good. The line delivery and tone is absolutely on point. But with that said, while I've had my complaints in previous videos that I've covered Echoes of the Living in, which I should also mention if you want to see me dive deeper into the other aspects of the game, go check those out. I'll have links below to them. At this point, I'm feeling very confident that this game is going to be special for survival horror fans. Like I said before, the devs truly seem to understand why the classics were so special. The gameplay, puzzles, and fixed camera angles are all top notch from everything I've experienced. Also, they have taken feedback very well from everything I've seen and experienced interacting with them. Now obviously, like any game, I'll fully judge it when it releases, I could end up being wrong about some things, but at this point I feel safe saying this absolutely needs to be on your radar as a survivor horror fan, if you got the time, go check out the demo on Steam while you can, and wishlist the game to help out the devs.